My name is Anne Mardell and I started opera in 1999. It was a brainchild really of, uh, old, for older people to be brought into the community. I was um, a health professional then and they asked me would I go in and ask older people to do exercises. I didn't know what this meant, I really, really didn't. So I went in and asked the older people what they wanted. Part of it was swimming. They wanted, they'd heard about complementary therapies but weren't sure about it. So I went about and tried to look at what was out there. I managed to get free swimming passes and I managed to meet two famous, fabulous guys that could do um, Tai Chi and they could do reflexology. So three of us used to go out every Tuesday to certain homes in the borough in Brutal and we'd do these exercises and it was a success. And from then on, it went on to become opera that is known now. We did, got the funding to provide health and wellbeing activities for the older people in some of their sheltered accommodations. So we've been in and we've done um, health days where we've gone and done chair exercises, a bit of Tai Chi, a little bit of meditation. And then we finish off the afternoon with a pamper session, doing massages and uh, all that kind of thing. And all different um, complementary therapies. Well, it's enable, enabled us to carry on doing the activities in the different uh, sheltered accommodations so the people are getting the benefit of not just being in their rooms, they're coming out of the rooms, they're getting involved in the activities, they're, sort of, they're getting benefits from the exercises they're do, doing, but they're also getting the benefits of the social side as well, um, getting to meet, meet and greet the people that are actually living in their area as well, and people from the outside going into the homes and showing them all the different activities, because we also sign post it onto other activities that are available in their area so it just gives them another outlet to go to save them being isolated in their own homes oh yeah good ball my name is mr skimmington i work here at parkview community school um, we're based in mars platting uh, and we're an inner city school we've been here since 2010. adactus have funded some floodlights for the school um, and it's made a positive difference because it means we can run our after school clubs uh, in the evenings when it would normally be dark in the winter. It means having the floodlights means we can, we can run them in the winter time. Um, my name's Anne McGonagall, I'm a tenant support worker for Making Space. Um, Bait Street is a supported housing scheme and um, today we're celebrating 25 years of it being open. Um, we've received over £1,200 for the event today to um, allow us to get music, food, um, prizes, and much more, decorations. I'm Glenn Barrett, I'm a resident, make a space. I moved here six months ago, and since I've been here, it's been great. The staff have been good with you. It's been fantastic. And today, this party, everybody was looking forward to it. Don't get many like this. It's been fantastic. I just like it, it's good. It's good with you. Hi, my name's Ali and I work for Y Kids. <laughs> y Kids is a children's charity working with children and young people and families in Bootle and we're in our sunny community garden in North Park in Bootle right now. Adactus has been a supporter of Y Kids for a number of years now. They funded a range of different projects. The most recent one was a project called Art is Rubbish, where we worked with young people. We collected rubbish off the streets in Bootle and then they framed it and put an art, art exhibition on, on with it, with the idea being that the children, young people in Bootle are, 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 not, are not rubbish, that they're really good. The money we receive from Adactus has made a big, a big difference. Um, the main thing is it enables us to challenge the stereotypes of what children and young people in Bootle are like. Bootle is in, in Liverpool has got a reputation for being a place where there's gangs and crime and violence, but actually the children and young, and young people in Bootle are amazing and they do amazing work in the community and the money from Adactus helps us to celebrate that. Green Slate Farm is a community-run farm that is run by the community for the community. In 2012 it was set up by a community group that was in Billing and Oral called Billing and Oral Transition Group. So the funding from Adactus paid for our pig project which is where we bought um, six pigs, six uh, large blacks, 
and then we also bought the fence lines for them and the materials for the pig ark, so the shelter. And we set up the, the pig project, which is designed to try and educate the community about high welfare uh, standards, especially when it comes to food. So the idea of that is that they can actually see a demonstration of um, a high welfare system and the way that the actual pigs can be kept. And then it helps them to make educated choices in the future. Also part of the funding was for the polytunnel skin. We had a frame already that were donated to us, but we didn't have enough skin for to, to actually cover the double frame polytunnel. My name is Brenda Devine. My name is Sonia Lopez. The garden is called Miles Platin Community Garden. So we've been the beneficiary of a couple rounds of funding post the gardens being built through Adactus, which has been really helpful in getting us established, helping us buy tools, buy compost, buy seeds. The Adactus funding has, has made a lot of difference to me. Being able to plant seeds and vegetables and um, being able to harvest what I'm planting has just been absolutely marvellous. So people do, people in the community do show interest and that's what we're trying to do, bring people into the community to, to share the garden and, and to share the love of growing things and harvesting our own vegetables and herbs. What this latest round of funding has also enabled us to do is fund Basically, it's called a kids club informally, a kids club gardening session. So with a local charity called YPAC, I've been involved with some of their workers in holding an after school garden club with mainly students from Parkview Elementary School across the street here. Um, they come Tuesday afternoons and that's really important in this neighborhood because getting kids involved is really, really a big piece of you know, the food puzzle and trying to get more people, newer generations, interested in fresh food and in growing. So, yeah, the funding is instrumental in helping us to engage with young people. My name is Olivia Treasure. I'm a community involvement worker at Oak Tree House. Oak Tree House has supported housing projects for people who are homeless in the Lancaster and Morecambe area. Last year, we received funds from the Breathe team, um, we've got £2,000 to pay towards some cook and eat sessions um, that we delivered once a week with the residents here. We did it, um, we did some cooking on a budget sessions. We also got some money towards a green project that we delivered and which enabled us to plant and grow some uh, fresh fruit and vegetables that we obviously used in the cook and eat sessions. We also put a uh, thousand pound towards uh, buying some five bikes. So we've now got a bike scheme so the residents can borrow them to go obviously to job appointments. The difference this funding has made to the project, uh, first of all the cook and eat sessions um, just it enables a sense of community within the building. Everybody gets involved, everybody sits down, shares meals together. Um, that's greatly appreciated. Obviously, with the food hygiene certificates, people can now leave with a, with a certified certificate that we can add to their CV, you know, and maybe look to jobs in catering in the future. And um, with regards to the bikes, obviously, um, health and well-being, um, people are being more active and able to get to appointments on time. And um, some people just go out together and, you know, are able to sort of enjoy it as a social, social occasion. Um, my name is Dolores Daniels. Um, the project is called Breakthrough Youth Club and it's run at the Inclusion Centre at Abraham Moss. Um, it got set up initially about a year ago. Um, we put a proposal through to Abraham Moss um, because we'd had this funding that was just sitting there. Um, I'd initially gone for equipment for a different place, but these were happily to have us here. Uh, the Breakthrough Youth Club's been running for over a year now. Um, Dolores and her team have heavily been involved in starting it up, um, rolling it out to the community. My little boy started high school last year, so for him it was important to have somewhere that he could come where he felt safe, um, see his friends that have gone to different high schools because he goes to a high school several miles away from here. Um, so for him it was a place that he could go on a Friday evening, he was inside, there was activities to do, um, group work, teamwork, just 
it's just made a big difference to the local community. Everybody talks about it. Um, Dolores takes the children for trips. Um, they're just a happy bunch of kids. It's very rare you see anybody when you walk through that door that's not smiling. Um, just really good. Recommend it to anybody. My name is Paul Maloney and the project we run is Freestyle Urban Soccer. We deliver numerous projects under One Community, One Goal. We received just under £2,000 to work on the local communities, on the estates, to engage with uh, young people who could be causing antisocial behaviour. Well, all our sessions provided free. As a community interest company, we don't charge for any of our activities. And we deliver where we feel there's a gap in service. So, i.e. we'll start at 6 o'clock in the evening and work up till about 10 o'clock. And we come into the communities where the young people are living, where they're hanging around. So the pitch you can see around me, for instance, we can put that on grass or on car parks or indoor facilities so we can get something up and running in a matter of minutes. My name's Ted Glenn and I live on Keeley Close which is a residential area in Newton East. Keely Close have worked a long time on the gardens with Adaptus Housing and Adaptus give us most of our funding. Since we've took the gardens up, we've had several awards and the amazing difference is for the residents coming out now to what they used to be and enjoying the gardens that we live in. It's such a change to the environment altogether. My name is John Farley and I live at Boy Court in these buildings here in McGull, Liverpool. My name is Brian Quayle and I live at 16 Boy Court in Liverpool, McGull. For the last eight years, the doctors have been very good and they have funded everything you see around this garden today. It's all thanks to the Dactus Housing Association. They've been very good and very kind with all the residents. Well, with the Adactus funding, we've been able to do anything we've done. We've got all the people coming out of a night, having a, a nice evening out in the sun, a nice little drink and uh, what an and really enjoying ourselves. And it, it keeps you together and everybody knows everybody. And let's hope that the funders in the future Hello, I'm Elaine Sherman. Uh, I'm a support worker here at Bamber Court Mother and Baby Unit, which is supported accommodation for 16 to 25 year old uh, girls and women um, who are either pregnant or have got a youngster under the age of five years old. Part of my role is to be a key worker for some of the girls, uh, seeing to the basic needs, um, helping them with things such as applying for benefits or um, helping them to move on to independent living. Uh, as you can see we're in the outdoor play area that um, the residents and the children use. Uh, Adactus has been able to fund um, a new little Wendy House uh, come play house which has been um, a great benefit to the children. They can come out here on the sunnier days and, and really have some fun. Uh, my name is Dorothy Boker, we're at Lee Caring Kitchen and it's a community cafe for everyone. We feed the homeless on two nights a week and the rest of the time it's uh, a pay as you feel community cafe where we, we get donated food that's um, used for the benefit of everybody. Adactus gave us the funding for fuel, equipment, uh, stationery and some food. Um, the fuel um, and stationery are, are, are the sort of thing we don't get donated by anybody else and without the fuel we would be un you know, unable to collect the other donations we get so it's absolutely massive difference that the fuel allows us to uh, provide things to the community. 
I think it makes a massive difference to the community of Lee. It's only just started um, and it's just going to get better and better with the more donations we get and the more volunteers we get we'll be able to provide instead of just uh, twice a week which we was doing previously we're going to be looking to provide um, food for the homeless and the community of Lee seven days a week. My name's Cathy and this is the new Mossbrook Community Garden and it was set up, uh, it's in Harper Hay and it was set up because um, at one time it used to be uh, a rubbish grot spot where people used to just come and dump all their rubbish here. There used to be mattresses, cookers, bin bags, just any old stuff that people were walking past and throw into the garden and we got sick of it really because it was pretty disgusting it brought the area down and every time you looked out your windows all you could see is other people's rubbish so we decided to look into how we could claim this land uh, to create a little oasis within the middle of Harper Hay for people to come to and enjoy. So Adaptus came on board as part of Community Cohesion and they facilitated us getting a grant um, we won a competition, they facilitated the, the entry to that and told us all about it. So we went on a, um, a programme on Granada Reports called People's Millions and we won. We won £60,000 and they came and they, de they had designers come to design the garden, to structure the garden and um, we got future, fu future Foods got involved and part of the grant criteria was that we'd grow food for the community and um, they built this marvellous place. If it hadn't been for Adaptus we would never have known about that and we wouldn't have got involved in, in all of this so it was great and they came on board and they came every week, they facilitated the promotion of the garden, events they paid for like food and stuff like that to put the events on. They also uh, provided support along the way to help us to build it into a garden. They were amazing. Yo adapters. My name is Sue Hiley and I'm one of the garden volunteers here at St Peter's Quiet Garden. St Peter's Garden Quiet Garden is here in Burtdale Southport and we're a community garden and we're open to anybody, anybody can call in and spend time here. In 2014, Adactus funded a fence and a secure gate to separate the quiet garden from the vicarage and this allowed us to open up the garden on a regular basis. And last year, 2015, Adactus funded us new gravel paths for all the garden and the cobblestones all around the edge, which has made it really good for wheelchairs, etc. And this year, they funded us for a picnic table and some flags for the picnic table to sit on, which is great because the families be able to come in and use that. Adactus have been so good, they're so generous. And we are able to open the garden on a, a regular basis now because of the fence. People can come in Monday to Thursday and on Sundays. And also, last year, we joined the National Garden Scheme. And this has allowed people to come in on two days. And this year we had 505 visitors to the garden, which is absolutely amazing. And also we've raised funds for the National Garden Scheme, which goes towards nursing and caring charities. So it really has made such a difference. And we are so, so grateful to Adactus for all their help, for their generosity, and for having the faith in our garden and helping us to carry on. My name's Carl Dillon, uh, we're in Parkview in the middle of Miles Platin. Basically what we've tried to do is start some football, some sports for kids in the community. We feel like they want a lot going on for them, there was a lot, there was a lot of uh, splits within the community. We try to bring the kids together to help them out, bring them closer and really provide something for them to, uh, to look forward to at weekends and during the week really, that's, a, that's what we've really done it for. We got a grant for about £2,000 from Adaptus. What that was to do was to provide kits, uh, uh, equipment, uh, floodlights and basically we've put them to use. What we found was that if with the children we could do it during the day which was fine like now on a light night however at night time when a lot of antisocial behaviour is going on we thought the floodlights would help that and we could do it for a bit later keep the kids occupied and basically keep them off the streets it just gives them like I said last time it's about something for them to uh, aim to. 
my dad was born down here uh, in Ancoats many, many years ago. I went to St Patrick's School. Uh, and I remember he used to say, there's not a lot down there for the kids, there was never anything. My dad passed away, so I thought what I will do, I'll try and let's get something going in his memory and also help the children. So what it's done, it's, it's actually helped them to, to get them all more closer together. It stopped, I think it stopped a little bit of antisocial behaviour, so that's the feedback we get. But the parents around, is, which importantly are really happy with what we're doing, they're saying the kids are going, when we're going football, when we're doing this, when we're doing that, and we've also got extra we've got a bit of extra money we get from other local businesses to help the children basically hi my name is beth dargan i'm a volunteer here at talbot house on the thrive project i come in two days a week i have a son with severe learning disabilities um, and epilepsy so talbot house is a great place um, for parent carers who's got children and adults with disabilities <laughs> Helen. Helen. Adapters funding is fantastic because the funding pays for our carers day. We have uh, the older carers from the Thrive Project who we bring in, we pick up, they have the dinner here, uh, we give them something to take home for the tea and also the other carers and we, they all mix together, the younger and older carers and they really have an enjoyable day, they have a game of bingo talking to each other, otherwise these older carers are isolated in their own home. My name is David Old and we're in Elliot Gardens. There was nothing to do here, so I decided to try and start growing things again. Planted potatoes, cabbage, cauliflower, tomatoes, anything they wanted I planted. They've had uh, some potatoes and that, they enjoyed them. They've, they've had different things. But they, no, well, they, in a couple of weeks' time, they'll be having cabbage and cauliflower, carrots and that. I think to homes, they have, there's some homes, they, they, they have gardens like this, but there's nobody, there's nobody working on them. You know, and I think they should have a do with it. You know, it's what they call it, you know. It's a matter of how old, yeah. You know, if you enjoy it, do it, I think. Instead of sitting in the flat, I can wait and sit here, it's nice. And you just watch the, the, the plants growing. <laughs>